Welcome to the Map Explorer podcast episode. This is Grace Learn go over each and every conference tournament for the 2024 um, college basketball March season. And this is going to be the 10th of 32 shows. And this is going to be the Colonial Athletic Association. And the tournament will be held at Entertainment and Sports Arena in Washington, D.C. as it's been the last several years. You know the drill. I go over the seeds. I pick the bracket, do the projections, and then we'll do a lot more. So, again, it's the CAA. Your one seed with a record of 24-7 and seven overall, 15-3 and three in conference play. The Charleston... Um, Cougars. That's what I thought it was. Um, I just forgot it for a second. Their uh, their uh team name. Um, Drexel is your number two seed, thirteen and five in conference by twenty and eleven overall. The um, Dragons of Drexel. Your three seed is the Hofstra Pride, 19 and 12 overall, 12 and 6 in conference play. Your four seed is the UNC Wilmington Seahawks, 21 and 9 overall, 12 and 6 in conference play. Your five seed is the Towson Tigers, 18 and 13 overall, 11 and 7 in conference play. Your six seed is the Delaware Fighting Blue Hens, 18 and 13 overall, 10 and 8 in conference play. Your seven seed is the Stony Brook Sea Wolves, 17 and 14 overall, 10 and 8 in conference play. Your eight seed is the Mammoth Hawks. 17 and 14 overall, 10 and 8 in conference play. Your ninth seed is the Campbell Fighting Camels. 14 and 17 overall, 8 and 10 in conference play. Your 10th seed is the Northeastern Huskies. 12 and 19 overall, 7 and 11 in conference play. Your 11th seed is the Elon Phoenix. 13 and 18 overall, 6 and 12 in conference play. Your 12th seed is the North Carolina Anti Aggies. 7 and 24 overall, 5 and 13 in conference play. Your 13th seed is the William and Mary Tribe. 9 and 22 overall, 4 and 14 in conference play. And your 14th seed is the Hampton Pirates. 8 and 23 overall, 3 and 15 in conference play. So, without further ado, here we go. First round will begin Friday, March 8th, 2 o'clock Eastern. 13th seed, William and Mary. 12th seed, NCAT. Um, so, William and Mary actually is well, pretty well balanced, which is. But the unfortunate thing for them is that they lost um, one of their best players for the season, Noah Collier, um, after three games due to an injury. And then A&T has a really, 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 really good score in Landon Glasper. He is outstanding, averaging over 20 a game in this league. Um, but he can't do it by himself. I actually have William & Mary projected 1.3, total 143.5, so I'm going to advance William & Mary in the seeding upset. 14 seed Hampton, 11 seed Elon. Um, Elon has some balance to them. Um, Their best player is TK Simpkins. Hampton really is not relevant, although... They have the best scorer on the field in this game, and Kyrie Smolin over 15 a game. Um, my projection here is Elon 6.2 to the 148, so I'm going to advance Elon. Second round will begin Saturday, March 9th at noon. Nine seed Campbell, eight seed Mammoth. Um, Campbell was a contender in its old league, but it really hasn't gotten there yet in this its new league. They have a really good score in Anthony De La Rosso, over 19 a game. Monmouth has been a team that's exceeded expectations. Their best player is averaging over 20 a game in Xander Rice. Um, I do project Monmouth as a favorite here, 1.7. So I am going to advance Monmouth. Um, second of four second round games. 13 seed William and Mary and 5 seed Towson. By the way, I have Mammoth 1.7, total 43 and 3 fifths. I didn't say that earlier. Um, Towson, one of the better teams in this league. Um, they're not a high scoring team, but they have a lot of guys that know what to do and they have a solid coach. I have 
Towson 10.9 over William & Mary, so I'm going to advance Towson. Um, third and fourth second round games. Um, 10 seed Northeastern, 7 seed uh, Stony Brook. Um, Northeastern, um, their best player is Chris Doherty, almost 14 a game. Um, and on the flip side, Stony Brook's the better team. Uh, deeper team led by Tyler Stevenson Moore at 16 a game. I project Stony Brook 5.2 to 143 and 350. So I'm going to advance Stony Brook. And the last of four second round games, 11 seed Elon, 16 Udell. Um, Udell has one of the better players in the conference too, and Jair Davis at 17 and a half a game. Um, I project Udell 5.6 over Elon, so I'm going to advance Udell. Quarterfinals, Saturday, March 10th. It will all begin at noon. Eight seed Monmouth, one seed Charleston. Um, Charleston's back in the mix here. They're a really good team. I don't think they're an at-large contender, but they're a deep team led by Rain Smith. I project Charleston 10 and 3 quarters, so I'm going to advance Charleston. Second of four quarterfinal games, five seed Towson, four seed UNC Wilmington. Wilmington's a solid team. They have an elite scorer and Trezarian White at almost 20 a game. I project Wilmington 2.8 over Towson, so I'm going to advance Wilmington. Third of four quarterfinal games, 7 seed Stony Brook and 2 seed Drexel. Um, Drexel's a, not a team that's known for its scoring, but they play good defense. I project Drexel 4.9. Their best guy is Justin Moore. Um, the Justin Moore that, um, it's funny because he's from Philly, but this isn't the Justin Moore that was on Villanova, so it's kind of weird. Um, so yeah, project Drexel 4.9, so I'm going to advance Drexel. And the last of four quarterfinal games, six seed Udell and three seed Hofstra. Um, Hofstra's been pretty solid this year, headed for a 21 season. If it wins this quarterfinal game, they have probably the player of the year in this conference, and Tyler Thomas at over 22 a game. I project Hofstra two and a quarter, so I'm going to advance Hofstra. Semifinals will be Monday, March 11th, 6 o'clock Eastern, CBS Sports Network. Four seed UMC Wilmington. One seed Charleston. Really good game. Best player on the court is probably going to be White from Wilmington. But Charleston's the better team and the well rounded team. I project Charleston 3.9. So I'm going to advance Charleston. The second of two semifinal games, three seed Hofstra, two seed Drexel. Again, Hofstra probably is the best guy in the court in Thomas. But Drexel is the better team. I project them 1.8. So I'm going to advance Drexel. And then the championship game, 7 o'clock on CBS Sports Network on Tuesday, March 12th. 2 seed Drexel, 1 seed Charleston. It's going to be a really, really good game. Um, two really good defensive teams. Um, and both these teams, I think, will get up for this. Um, would I be shocked if it's something else in the uh, conference title game? No. Because the two teams in the semifinals have good scorers that can carry their teams. Um, but I do project Charleston 3.7. So, therefore, I'm going to pick the Charleston Cougars to win the 2024 CAA tournament. All right. So, Charleston, I'm getting the auto bid. But if they lose... Um, I think if they're not in the Final Four, if they somehow lose to Monmouth or Campbell, um, I think they go to the CBI. But if they lose in the semis or in the title game, they're probably NIT bound. Um, Drexel, I think, is NIT unless they lose in the quarters. Um, Wilmington, I think, will be CBI Hofstra. And you have a couple other CBI candidates in Towson, Delaware, Monmouth, and Stony Brook. Um most outstanding player of the tournament. Um, I've Charleston winning, so I'm gonna go with Rain Smith for most outstanding player 
Although the player of the year is going to be um, the guy on Hofstra, Thomas. Um, so, value to win this tournament. I'm going to pull up the odds. Um, but the funny thing is I need to pull it up on a different site so I can see what Mammoth's numbers are. Um, so Charleston's the favorite at plus 225, Drexel's plus 380, Hofstra's plus 280, Wilmington's plus 380, Towson's plus 950, Udell's 13, Stony Brook's 30, Mammoth's 35, Campbell is 250, Northeastern's 50, Elon and NCAT, William and Mary Hampton are all 500 to 1. That's courtesy of DraftKings. But... What's up with the New Jersey teams always having value? And, of course, I can't bet on New Jersey teams. But, yeah, I think Monmouth has value at 35-1 to with Rice leading the way. Um, but I would throw Charleston in a parlay with, like, Drake and see if you can get Wright State still at a good number or Colgate or some of these other teams. If you want to just bark up a conference tournament parlay, I would recommend putting Charleston at over two to one with I would just say Wright State, um Drake and maybe Morid State from the um OVC. Um so um Coaching stuff. Um, Pat Kelsey still at Charleston. I think he could get a different job. Even Zach Spiker at Drexel. He's done outstanding this year. Um, Speedy Claxton at Hofstra. Needs to be considered. Um, Takayo Siddle of UNC Wilmington has done a great job. Um, Gino Ford at Stony Brook I think has done a good job this year. King Rice, who's been at Mammoth a long time, I think. This is the best coaching job he's done since they moved to the CAA, in my opinion. Um, Martin Inglesby of Udell's done a good job. And, of course, um, Pat Scary of Towson. So, those gentlemen have done fantastic jobs at their teams. And all could end up on uh, coaching different teams, in my opinion. Hot seat, guys. Um, I do not think Billy Taylor's on the hot seat at Elon. Monte Ross is new. So, know that, that Dane Fisher is a hot seat guy. Five years, and they're irrelevant. Edward Joyner's been at Hampton for 15 years, and they're bad. Maybe he's gone. Bill Cohen's been at Northeastern 18 years. Will they make a change anytime soon? I know they made the tournament several years ago as a 15, but they really haven't done much since. And Kevin McGeehan of Campbell, I think, will be safe as well. Um, and then, like I said, for next year, it's so hard to predict, like, who's going to come back and such in the transfer portal and all that. So we're not going to predict, like, who bounces back and such. I mean, at gunpoint, maybe Northeastern will be better, maybe Campbell. Um... Maybe out of, like, the Stony Brook Monmouth group, Udell. I think Udell and Towson will probably be a little better. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if Drexel or Charleston dropped off or even Hofstra to some degree. But uh, you never know with the transfer portal. That's why it's so hard to predict these kinds of things. So there you have it for the CAA. Next up will be the SOCON. <laughs> 